The word says the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. And there's something special about the congregation coming together as one and praising him. You know, we are spirit, soul, and body. And it's not all just spirit. But praise God, as we're praising him today, I could feel the tangible presence of the Lord in my soul and body as well. Anybody else out there? You know, I praise the Lord that he made us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and these three are one. We are also triune, spirit, soul, and body, and each one is important. And I, I praise the Lord for that. Amen. Uh, got an exciting word for you today. Can't wait to share it, but I just want to say a shout out first. Again, to Michelle Jennings. Where are you, Michelle? Praise the Lord. And the, uh, the women's conference, praise God, I think she said there was 139. And uh, amen. That's something. That's, and uh, so, Michelle, 139 ladies from all over. How many churches do you think were represented there? We have 39 churches. 39 churches. 39 churches. And... Praise God. Come here. <laughs> and, and our own Elena Russell, who grew up at this church, was one of the speakers for those 139 ladies. Amen. And she has anointing and call on her life. I love to see our young ones that were they were they were born here pretty much and came up all the way through. Now got one singing, one on the uh, on the keys and one speaking at conferences there. What a blessing. What a blessing. It's a river, man, and the river flows, flows, it flows out. He that believes in me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. It stirs up in us. It's, he's speaking of the Holy Spirit in us. And wherever you go, wherever you go as believers, you carry the kingdom. And the words you speak are spirit and life to people around you. It's, it's a supernatural, it's a supernatural walk with God. I uh, praise the Lord. Uh, besides um, the women's ministry, I also wanted to me uh, mention, don't forget Cross Camp coming up for the youth and River Kids Camp coming up for the, for the children there. Praise God. Uh, also want to say, be in prayer. We're working on Tyler and I. We'll be heading back to West Africa um, the last week of May. And uh, man, God keeps opening the door from one country after the next. Uh, we've been hitting... Uh, we hit a lot of East Africa already, Central Africa. Now God's the last eight or ten years been heading to West Africa. We've been going from nation to nation down the coast. And this next trip is going to be Ivory Coast and Togo. So two brand new nations. We're going to be speaking to many pastors there. So y'all can already be in prayer about that. And it's not just happening when we go. As you know, we have 15 teams trained and 12 nations that are carrying it, uh, this message of New Covenant Grace, to city after city in those nations. But also, just in the last few years, something new, and it happened a lot this month. In, in, um, on Monday, um, we were by video. We were in um, Karachi, Pakistan, as one of the leaders there gathered about 100 pastors and leaders and they had a big screen set up on a big outdoor arena. It looked like about the size of this church with pastors all over. And uh, they were showing our Go Deep Grace teaching uh, that has been translated into Urdu. And then I came on at the end and through an interpreter, I got to speak to those pastors. But then again, in another city of Pakistan, in Falzabad, um, just recently on their um, Saturday, which was our late Friday night, got up like, well, four in the morning Saturday. They had gone through our videos there with another group of pastors, and then I got to come on and speak to them as well. So I, I just, I just want to say, man, God is blessing. You know, the kingdom is an ever-increasing, ever-expanding kingdom. And we're going to be talking about that uh, in the message today. So praise God. Let's... Uh, one more thing uh, I want to mention, the Destiny Conference, we are connected to Dr. Phil Brassfield, who is an apostle 
of, um, you know, a minister of ministers, and he gathers uh, many ministers from around and many churches associated with his network, and we have been for over 20 years. Every year they have the gathering conference, and uh, we want to invite you. So any, uh, any of our leaders, any of our staff, if you're involved in a ministry or you just want to go, it's available to you. I'd love to take some of, from our church. Just let me know. I'm going to be registering some more coming up. But the date is June 4th through the 6th, the 4th through the 6th. And, um, you know, the main part of the conference is uh, that Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, all the way into the evening. And then they have a Thursday session and then coming back Thursday afternoon. So if you're interested in that, it's, it's always a blessing. Um, they, have, they have ministry for every aspect of the church and uh, equipping the saints for the work. And it's a blessing. So just let me know. Praise the Lord. Let's open our Bibles to Chronicles. Chronicles. So praise God. If you've been keeping up with our, our Bible study and our reading, uh, we've been in Chronicles this week. Chronicles and also in the Psalms. Um, we're doing this kind of in chronological order where we're reading about the life of Saul and David uh, in Samuel. And we're also reading the Psalms that David wrote during that time. So it's a chronological order. It's, it helps. If um, you want to be a part of this and you haven't joined us yet, praise God, we'd love for you to take part in reading through the Bible with us this year. So you don't have to start over. Just jump in right where we are. And um, you can find that by on um, most people have the little version Bible app. And then you go to Bible Recap with Tara Lee Cobble and you can join us there. So it's a real blessing. But while we were while we were studying and reading Chronicles um, came apart, came upon a little portion of Scripture and uh, Let's turn there. Chronicles, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, chapter 4. This, uh, this book, originally written over 3,000 years ago, but because it's the Word of God, inspired of Him, it's going to speak to your heart with something written in this long list of genealogies. Something stands out that I wanted to talk about today. It's the Word of God. It's life-giving. It's eternal. And uh, we praise the Lord. So in hidden, as you're reading Chronicles, and if you're listening to it on the Bible app and going through, man, it got to be just one name after the other. You know, going through the list of all the tribes. And one thought I had in finishing it up this morning and listening to all those names... You know, God knows every one of them. So it might have been for us trying to read Chronicles in the history of the genealogy. And you're reading, you know, from Noah. Really, it goes from Adam and then goes to Noah and then goes to Abraham. And then the 12 tribes of Israel. And then it starts listing, list, listing them clan by clan, name by name, and their importance... And what their role was as the people of God, some were given the role of the tabernacle and the worship. Some were given the role in the army. Some, some were given the role as kings. And we can see this list and really just listening to it or trying to read it is kind of like boring or like, hey, when's this going to be over? I want to get to one of the stories and we're thinking that. But I also had this thought. This is God's word, and every one of those names is important. Why? Everything in the Old Covenant is Jesus concealed, the New Covenant, Jesus revealed. So what is it saying to us? Every one of your names, now that you are the family of God, because they were the people of God, and each one significant and important had a role, we who receive Christ, now we are the family of God, and each one of you, your name, your story, your life, your situation is just as important. And he has written your name in the book of life. So praise God. I don't think it would be too boring for us if we open up the book of life and go through names to try to find ours, would it? 
Amen? So that's special. Your life, your name, written on the heart of God, written in the book of life is very important to him. And in this list of genealogies, we find something very special hidden in this list. In chapter 4, if you're there, if you're with me in chapter 4 of First Chronicles, I just like to see it, hold your Bible up and say, yes, glory, I'm there. Love to see Fresh Start bringing their Bibles, people all around. And I know, praise God, a lot of you have it on your phone, so you're with me there too, amen? You got your Bible app on your phone, hold it up. All oh, the high-tech people, there we go, amen. All right, good. Per the important thing is you see it with me and we'll have it on the screen as well. So he's going through this list and he's speaking all these and, um, you know, until 2001, when I first got a hold of this message, I had never seen it before. But it says this as listing the clans, um, 1 Chronicles chapter 1, let's start in verse 1, the descendants of Judah. So here's one of the sons of of Israel, okay? Jacob, his name was changed to Israel. Here's one of his sons, and now here's all the descendants of this person, this man, Judah, Perez, Hezron, Carmi. He starts listening, listing all of them in order, and then, praise God, he goes all the way through, and 44 names into this, it comes to verse 9, and it says, Jabez was more honorable than all his brothers. So in the list, it doesn't say anything about the others, but it pauses at this man. God pauses at this man and has the writer inspired by the Lord, by the Holy Ghost, write it down and bring out this man's name and say, Jabez was more honorable than all his brothers. Something about that just stands out. We're going to look at it a little closer. Why? It makes us wonder, so why was he more honorable? What did he do? What was he like? We want to know this guy. And then we first start, and it says this. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I have given birth to him in pain. So the first thing we see about him was she had a lot of pain in that childbirth and even named the boy Pain. If you translate it from Hebrew, it actually means like sorrow or he will bring sorrow or he has brought sorrow or, you know, so it's kind of like, you know, we don't we don't like to do that. There's so many we, we can look at in the Old Testament how they spoke the word over people in their name. I mean, we just read a story a week ago or so where the, the, the woman was dying and they had the Philistines had stolen the ark and she named her child Ichabod, no glory. Well, man, I wouldn't want to keep that name the rest of my life. I'd be asking God to bless me and change it. Amen. No glory. Because, you know, we know this is all about the glory of God. So here's one that's named. So the name is significant. Earlier on in Chronicles, we read about one of the, the names. And in chapter one, it says, and his name was Peleg. Peleg. And then you look up that name and it means divided. And then it gives a little note on his name. Not many of this genealogy does it give a note next to the name, but Peleg, it says, in his time, the earth was divided. In his time, the earth was divided. And I look at world history and study, and we know from the records that there was a time when the earth's continents were together. You can see it on the map right outside the door, how they fit like a puzzle. And at some point... There was great earthquakes and God divided the continents and started spreading them out. And it was during this man Peleg's time. OK, so we can see that there was different times and different names and the name has significant significance. So here is Jabez. His na name means pain. I have given to birth. He's sorrow or will cause pain. And uh, man, that's that's not good to be labeled that way. So let's look what happened. So Jabez, verse 10, cried out to God, to the God of Israel. He's one of the descendants of the tribe of, he's a descendant of Judah. He's in the tribe of Judah. He's one of them. 
he belongs, his family belongs to God, he's the people of God, and yet he's born in sorrow and pain. And let's just pause here and make this a representative of all of us, because really we were all born under Adam with a nature of sin. There's a lot in here, maybe born in a nice, strong family, Christian family that raised them in Christ to know, but we all had to come to know Christ. Praise God. We could have even, we can raise our kids protected from the evil as Christians and raise them. But at some point, even though they're protected over that mother and father, at some point they'll also have to receive Christ personally themselves. So we all had to be born again. Amen. Born of the spirit. We were born of water. We were born of woman. We were born in sin. We are, that is sorrow and pain. And then we must be born again. Now you can look at your sorrow and pain of your past and run it up against somebody else's and maybe yours was much greater than the next guy. That's true, right? I mean, we see that all the time. Maybe, you know, you came in a broken home. Maybe you were beaten, neglected, rejected, raped, abused, whatever. Maybe all kind of things led to pain and your life has been sorrowful and painful for you, for your family, for others. And it's been a lot of pain like this man. But the good news of the story is it doesn't have to stay there. What did he do? He's born in that pain. His name means bring sorrow or pain, and he's not accepting it. He wants a change, so he calls on the God of Israel. He calls on the God of his forefathers. He calls on the supernatural God who had called them to him, and he knows that he can speak to God. So he reached out, and he says this, Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me. And enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm that I will be free from pain. So he knows his situation. And folks, some of us, the way we grew up, the way your struggle, your pain, your poverty, your addiction, your bondage, your marriages, your jail time, all these different things we can relate to Jabez but praise God, the good news is he cried out to God and God heard him. He cried out to God from where he was and God heard him. And praise the Lord, we're going to see that God granted his request. Well, Jesus taught us to pray, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you will find. God is looking around the world for who wants to be blessed by him, who wants to be close to him. He wants to bless you. He wants to change the Jabez's. He wants to give you the blessing. He wants to enlarge your territory. He wants his hand of his power and glory to be with you. He wants that. He just wants someone willing to ask. He's looking for somebody. Are you willing to stop, turn, look up at me, seek me and say, God, I need you. I want you to bless me. Now, some might look at this and say, well, is that a selfish prayer? He wants him. There's so much in the world, man. I went through a time in my life when I first started going to Africa and things and said, man, what I saw, there's so much poverty, pain, struggle. The United States people growing up here don't even realize. I mean, we've got programs to, as a safety net to help the poor and stuff. When we're over there, I see people on boards with wheels that are with no legs that are struggling, and there's no government program helping them. None! We see women in India coming up to the cars, knocking on the door, holding babies they can't feed. No! Program, you know? So... My heart was like, gosh, here I am in America. I'm preaching to a church. We're all blessed. And I'm asking for things for, for us or for our church or for our ministry. I said, I said, Lord, so I had to start going through, you know, an hour's worth of prayer, praying for everybody else first. And God said, stop it. I'm going to take care of them, too. I'm going to do things through the church for them, too. But I want to bless you. And I want to bless your family and your people right here so that... I can bless the world. 
You see, when we ask him to bless us, it's not an unrighteous prayer. It's the right thing because the same way God called out one man, Abraham, and I'm said, I'm going to bless you and you are going to be a blessing through you. All nations are to be blessed. So God wants you to be bold and say, bless me today. God wants to bless. Caleb, God wants to bless you. It's not just about the church. He wants to bless you wherever you walk, in your school system, in your classes, to your students, your finances, your marriage, your family. He wants to bless everything you are. It's not just about church. It's about your business. It's about everything. He wants to bring the blessing of the kingdom through you and whatever you lay your hand to. And it's right for him to ask, for you to ask. I mean, how many of you don't ask for, you know, you're, you're, you start a new business and you say, God bless my business. That's the right thing. God bless my home. Lord, I, I, I want a child. Lord, bless me with a child. It's the right thing. He wants us to go to him. He's a good, good father. He wants us to ask. Many have not because they don't have faith to ask. The Bible says you have not because you will not ask. We are to know our father. This man was born in a painful situation. His name means sorrow. And yet God paused to write a paragraph him in the Bible because he had the boldness to know that God is good. And if I ask with the right motives for his glory, God will grant my request because it's God's will to bless you. It's God's will to bless you like he blessed Abraham to be a blessing to those around you. Not only to those around you, but to the whole world. Amen. So let's take a deeper look. Something changed here when he cried out to God. You know, and this is all scriptural. So many verses. We sing about it. We read about it. God gives beauty for ashes, you know. There's sorrow in the night. Joy comes in the morning. There's verse after verse about a change in a situation when we call on God, amen? A change in a situation. He wants us to call, and he wants to answer your cry. I believe right now there's cries of the heart around this congregation that by the faith of me preaching it and speaking the word, we just said uh, we have the authority to speak his word. We just sang it. And we see things happening by the, the authority of the word of God and us speaking it right now and you hearing it and believing it, the situations you have a cry of your heart, God hears you and he will grant your request because it's his will to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. It's his will. Let's look. Praise God. Let's look some more. Let's look at the four elements of this simple prayer in this one little paragraph. You know, this came out, I want to show you, I picked up this little book, my office full library full of the Word of God that's blessed me over the years, and I opened it up and it says April 21st, 2001, from mom. I was visiting Florida. And my mom had read this, and she said, David, here, I want you to have it. And I wrote that down. She's 90 years old today. And I wrote that down, and I took it, and I read it. And then I said, well, I I remember. I know I preached this. Because just about every message I've ever preached, I can remember as though it was last week. So I'm thinking I preached this. Maybe I preached it in 2010 or something. I go looking through my files at 2010 and 9, and I found it in the folder that said 2001. So it had such an impact on me as soon as I read it that I preached it right away, and I pulled out my notes, and it's from 2001. And here it is, 2024, and it's still blessing the world today. Hallelujah. Because the Word of God is living and alive. And I want to share with you, as I went through it and made some special notes for the, for the message today, I just say, so this man got a hold of this one scripture, and he wrote this little book, and it's gone around the world. 
preaching to conferences with thousands and pastors and leadings and, and students and of Bible colleges, all kind of thing, who took a hold of this blessing in this prayer and began to pray it themselves. And God started answering their prayer like he answered Jabez's prayer because he's not a respecter of persons. What he did for Jabez, he's going to do for you today. So we're going to pray this prayer for you individually, from your heart, for the church corporately, for your businesses, for your family, for your homes. And God's going to answer that just like he did for Jabez. He'll answer it today. Hallelujah. First part of the prayer. First Chronicles chapter four, looking at it together. He says this, Jabez cried out to God of Israel, point number one, oh, that you would bless me. And then in the King James Version, it, adds, it says, bless me indeed. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Oh, that you would bless me. God, I was born in sorrow. My name means sorrow. I've got a future according to this name as sorrow. But Lord, I want to stop in the tracks, turn to the God of all creation who has a, his love and wants to bless. And I turn to you and say, oh, God, that you would erase this and bless me, not a little, but bless me indeed. See, bless your, your business. Guess what? God wants to bless it more. Has he blessed your farm? He wants to bless it more. Has he blessed your marriage, your children? He wants to bless it more. God is a God. Uh, this kingdom is about ever increasing glory. He started with the glory in the, the Garden of Eden. And he said, be fruitful, multiply and fill the whole earth with glory. And mankind fell and the whole earth was filled with corruption. But Jesus came and brought the kingdom back and he commissioned his church, you and I, who are now, we are his family. And he says, I want you to do the same thing from the beginning. Fill the earth with glory. And there's only one way to do it. You must be blessed. You have to be blessed to fill the, what is blessed? It's not just, you know, you sneeze and somebody says, God bless you. And we blow it off as, you know, we can still say that. God bless you to someone who sneezes. But we don't want to make it so small and ritualistic that it just means like have a good day. There was something special in the Old Testament when that father would lay hands on that son and give the blessing because whatever he spoke happened. There was power to the words of the blessing. Amen. And God taught the priest how to bless the nation of Israel and how to speak the blessing. So you don't just want the blessing, hope the blessing. You speak it. You believe it in your heart. The same way with your salvation. You must believe in your heart and confess with your mouth. Jesus is Lord. Same thing for the blessing. You must get, receive the word from God. Believe it in your heart and begin to speak it to yourself. Amen. What is the blessing? Simple. It's the favor of God on your life. Does God have favorites? Yes. You know, we kind of, my wife and I, we try to make sure it's special. We got 12 grandkids. We don't want to treat anyone and, and want, don't want anybody to feel like, we want to treat them all like favorites. Well, that's what God wants to do for you. Who is his favorites? Who does he want to show himself strong to? The eyes of the Lord are searching to and fro to see who has a heart that wants to follow him and do his will. And he is looking to give them special favor. Amen. Come on. There was 12 disciples. And Jesus walked and took three of them a little further than the rest. And he manifested himself in full glory rose above the earth and shined and, they, and it was Peter, James, and John that saw it and the others didn't. It was this guy Jabez, not all the reds that were listed, but this guy Jabez turned and sought God and asked for the blessing and God honored it and granted his request and showed him more favor than the others. He was more honorable. There's some of you here that say, Lord, I'm all in to your kingdom. 
Lord, bless me. I want to be a blessing to the people I speak to. I want to be a blessing in my business. I want to be a blessing wherever I go. Lord, bless me. And he's looking for those who are willing to ask and willing to take the responsibility of what he gives you and bless others. He's looking for us. Or you could say, well, no, I don't want to do I don't want to go that far. I just want to go go to church on Sunday. I don't want to read the Bible with y'all during the week. I don't want to go to a class. I don't want to study. I'm just going to go. I want to be saved from hell, but I don't want to be a part of a blessing that you're going to bless me so much. It's going to overflow out of me and bless the people on my job and bless all my employees and bless my, all the kids in my school and bless all around. Lord, you know, I just want to be saved from hell. Well, maybe that's what you'll have. But there's some of you who want more. Who will he bless more? Who will he favor? Those who want more. So does God have favorites? Yes. Caleb, I'm one of his favorites. And it's not anything I did. He showed me his glory and wanted to bless me. And I said, yes, please. You're one of his favorites. I'm just saying there's more to it. There's more coming. All you got to do is ask. He wants to bless you. Praise God. And it's not all about being a pastor or being a Sunday school teacher. It's he wants to bless your business. See, he wants to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. All of those things. I mean, praise God. God blessed and put the natural resources in the earth because he wanted people to have the skill set to go into the ground and pull out the oil so we could fly to Africa. And so people can get around. He put all the blessing there. He put the creative ability to build a car, to, to, to run a farm, to do all, all of these things as God's blessing. It's not just about what you do in the church. It's what you do out there. He wants to bless the world through you in whatever you lay your hand to. Hallelujah. So whatever you're doing, ask him. He wants to bless you. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Hallelujah. That priestly blessing God gave to the Israel for the priest to speak over him. And we sing it. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious, unmerited favor to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Hallelujah. He wants Israel to walk knowing that God's with them, in them, flowing through him and going to bless the world. He wants you to walk knowing that God's with you, in you, flowing through you and going to bless all around you. Hallelujah. When you guys put your skills together and brought it together and dropped a new engine in my old car and now it runs like a new car, that's a blessing to me and a blessing to the kingdom and a blessing to you. Thank you for your God-given skill set that you're using for his glory. See, it's all, amen. You see, it's all glorious. All of it. Praise the Lord. Amen. So he said, the Lord bless me indeed. So God had to show me, David, you don't have to spend an hour praying, praying for every nation in Africa before you pray for your church. Thank you, Lord. I still have a heart. I'm going. But I don't have to burden myself in my mind that way. I can pray for specific needs right here because God wants to bless right here. He wants to bless you. Amen. How many have received this first part of the prayer of Jabez where he said, oh, that you would bless me indeed greatly, that you're willing to do that right now. Do we receive that? You're willing to be blessed? Your home, your business, your family? Well, let's look at the next part. Praise God. You see, Riss, remember, when he said that to Abraham and said, I'm going to bless you, and you're going to be a blessing to all, and all the earth will be blessed through you, and through that line of chronological order of genealogies that's recorded, that is so important, came the Messiah through that line. 
You see, so all those names are important. And through Abraham came the Messiah and the Messiah has blessed the whole world. You see, so Abraham received the blessing because he knew if God blessed him, then God would bless others through him. That's why we want to be blessed more. I want to be blessed more. Hallelujah. So that what's in me already and has flowed out to others will flow out even more. Why? Because it's an ever increasing glory. It's a nonstop increase in the kingdom of heaven. It doesn't stop and dwindle. It expands and grows, so which brings us to the next line. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. And then the next line is, enlarge my territory. Lord, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. King James says, enlarge my coast. Now, Old Testament at this time, what you're talking about each tribe had a section of land and each clan had a section of that land and physically saying, Lord God, enlarge my territory. But everything in the Old Testament physically points to a spiritual reality for today. So when we're asking him to enlarge our territory, we're saying, Brian, you know, God blessed you with a gifted mind and business. And he started that. And you have inside of you a desire to expand for his glory and for you. So God's going to bless that. And he wants to expand. So it's not it's about expanding your business, your ministry ministry, your influence with others. It's about the kingdom that's in you and whatever you're doing, expanding through you. Enlarge my territory. Are you willing to pray that? Like Jabez pray, Lord, bless me and now expand my influence with youth, with children, with people, with nations, with farms, with business, he wants to do it, but he's seeking for those bold enough to ask. And if you're faithful with what he's giving you now, he'll give you more. But if you're just asking for you, Lord, bless me so I could look like I'm blessed to everybody else, or bless me so I'll be wealthier than everybody else. Lord, bless me so I can, you know, because I want this. No, Lord, bless me so that I might be a blessing to reveal your glory to those around me. Amen. So he knows the heart. So Jabez cried out, enlarge my coast. Man, the first thought I had, praise God, and we were standing out, I'll say standing out here. No, we were standing right here after starting the church in 2000, 2001, 2, 3, and the, we outgrew the building we were in, built another one for the children, got together, people started sewing. We are standing right here with shovels in our hand, got a picture of it, and I think Bobby Dale read the uh, verse that said in Isaiah, same thing that he said, Lord, expand their coasts. Lord God, stretch out our tents. Lord, make our tent curtains wide. We will expand to the north, the south, the east, and the west. We read the verse that God wanted to expand. We stuck a shovel in the dirt to build the foundation of this building. We prayed that it would not only be a blessing to the community, but a blessing to the world. And now we're in 21 nations. He wants you to ask. And you know what? We're not through. It's gone from this nation to another. We got two more nations coming. Man, just preached to a bunch of pastors on, on the phone on, on, and, uh, and speaking to them while it's going through in a different language. There's just a multiplication of ways. See, every one of you, every one of you has the kingdom inside of you in whatever God has called you to put your hand to. You're also corporately, he's blessing the church as we do this vision together. But each individually, I'm telling you now, you're not done. He wants to bless you greater than before. Because it's an ever expanding kingdom. It's not about what just happens here on Sunday. It's what happens out there during the week as you take the kingdom in you and you speak to somebody on your job or in your neighborhood or going out witnessing and you're expanding what God's giving you. That's what it's about. And we're raising up team to do it right now. This might be a good time to say this. Gosh, 
Clay and I have been getting a few calls from some people. Who, hey, we've heard rumors about this. Pastor Dave, are you stepping down as pastor? Is somebody else going to be pastor? Are you moving to Florida? Or this? No, I'm overseeing this church and called to continue to do it. Amen. Praise God. And I see I'm called to continue to do it until God takes me home. <laughs> Hallelujah. But what we're doing is we're raising up more pastors and more, not only pastors, but evangelists, prophets, apostles, teachers. Why? Because God's model is not what you've seen all your life in a local denomination of a pastor having the role of and everybody relying on him. No, God's model is to raise up leaders who equip the saints for the work of the ministry. And a church this size needs many pastors, not one. So praise God, we're starting to honor that. I want to recognize Clay Russell. He's been a, one of the pastors here for many years, but we call him Fresh Start Director. Now we're going to start, at the, we're going to start calling him one of the pastors. Where Tyler Dean is a gifted teacher. Um, praise God, it has a call on his life. He's not only teaching classes, but he walks in the office of the kingdom of God as a teacher. And I'm taking him to other nations to teach pastors. <laughs> Hallelujah. So now... We as leaders just had a meeting and all agreed we commissioned him to be on staff here and be the pastor overseeing the nursery, the toddlers, the children's church, the youth, and that he's going to work together with all of these and encourage them, equip them. I'm still going to oversee this. I'm still going to watch over this, but I've got a helper now to help me see it through to get more things done. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we're raising up. We've got a team. Terry Poland started a team of evangelists. They're going out in the streets witnessing. I believe, praise God, I believe, Rob, this prayer today is for you as well. Oh, Lord, expand my coast, expand my territory. Oh, Lord, bless me that I might be a blessing to others. That, Lord, what I'm doing will flow through me and others will catch the vision and go with me. And we'll win many because we have now recognizing the anointing of apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist in the church and raising up leaders all around. And not only that, when we connect to the anointing of other apostles like we have this church, we've done it for years, but now I'm starting to understand it. When we connected to the anointing of the apostle James Rebavaru in India, we connected to the blessing on his life that's flowing to this church. Do I need to say that again or did you get it? When we connected to John Wandera in Africa, and all the churches that he's planted, and we go there, and we sow there, we've connected into the blessing that God blessed him is now overflowing on you. When your business and your personal funds ties to this church, and we connect to India and Africa and Sri Lanka, then all the blessings that we connect to come back to you. Do I get a clap there too? Do you believe that? So you can have that if you want, if you believe it, if you step into it, or you can say, no, God, I don't really believe that in all that blessing. I don't want to walk there. Jabez was in sorrow. Jabez was struggling. Jabez needed change and said, God, I need you to bless me. And you know what? God said yes. And he'll say yes to you. Expand my territory. Well, he is. As far as the church goes corporately, church, he's been expanding our territory for 24 years. But we're not through. We're looking at it doubling and tripling. Hallelujah. Not only here. Look at this. Don't you see? Praise God. We teach the unity of the body. We reach out to other pastors and churches. And now we're seeing that flow through one young lady, Michelle, who's put it together and see 39 churches come together. We start it. We believe it. We speak it. And the same anointing that's in us flows to the people of the church. We're connected to God. Praise God. Who's ordained. In the church, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, leaders, praise God, for, to equip the saints and provide and show and demonstrate that you might fulfill your calling and all together it brings glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, that you might bless me indeed. That's not a selfish prayer. That's a God prayer. That's what he wants. 
It's his desire. And enlarge our territory. Praise God. I see a talking minister and my son and God birthed in them a, a coffee shop and cookie shop in Winsboro. Now they got vision to expand it here and there and Callie's cookies grow and why? That's a God thing. It's a kingdom thing. Many of your businesses just like that. See, when you're faithful with the few things and recognize its kingdom, that's when, when you think you did it all, <laughs> you'll stay in what you can do. When you recognize it all originates with him and it's all for his glory, you open yourself to everything. Hallelujah. You see, we say enlarge our territory, but some of us think, well, I'm looking at my abilities. I didn't make it to co through college. I look at my experience. I look at my training and my degrees. You know, I look at maybe my personality. I'm not as outgoing as the next. Or I look at our appearance. Or I look at our past. Or I look at our addictions or our failures or our family we grew up with. So God, I really just want to make it to heaven. I'm going to take what you gave me and I'm going to bury it and just save it for later. God said, depart from me, that wicked servant. And the others took the two talents he said, he gave. said, Lord, what you've given me, I want to double. And the other got five. Lord, what you've given me, Lord, bless me with more. I want to double it for you. And the other had ten. And, and he said, take, take the one from the guy who just thought he wanted to bury it. Because he didn't think, see, you're still, you're counting on your own ability, counting on your own education, counting on your own degrees, counting on your own. He said, no, 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 it's not your ability, your appearance, your personality, plus a little bit of God's help gives you success. No, it's your weakness and God's strength that brings, opens up the doors of heaven. It's you recognizing, I can do nothing without you, but Lord, in faith, I'm with you, and with you, I can do all things through God who strengthens me. Tyler, we're about to go. My prayer all the time is, Lord God, I don't know how this is happening. It's got to be you. All these pastors are meeting together. I haven't written a book. I'm not, they don't know. And yet they're all coming together. Lord God, if you don't speak, we have nothing for them. But if you speak, they'll all be blessed and their churches will be blessed and their nation will be blessed. You see, it's not, it's not looking at your strengths. It's looking at his strengths. David didn't go fight Goliath in the armor of the world. He didn't go fight Goliath in, in his, you know, bucked up, built bigger than him. He went, you bring uh, all of that sword. I bring the name of the Lord. Amen. See, it's not by might. It's not by power. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. As long as you are willing for your business, for your family, Lord God, I trust in you. I'm trusting on you to do it supernaturally. Lord God, I need you. Hallelujah. Yes, praise God, he's given us tools to sharpen our understanding, to sharpen uh, to our leadership, to grow and to study and to, to do all what he's shown us to do, to grow and develop, praise the Lord. But we're counting on his supernatural power. He said this, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. It's my willingness plus his weakness and our obedience that brings God's supernatural power to expand your territory. Obey him in the little thing. And God will bless you with more. Now, then he says this. The prayer's not over. Let your hand be with me. Number one, oh, that you would bless me indeed. Number two, enlarge my territory. Ever increasing kingdom. Number three, oh, that your hand would be with me. Lord, as we endeavor enlarging the territory, if I don't have your power, we can't go. Lord, if we don't have your hand with us, we're not going to the streets tonight. Lord God, we're going to pray first. We're going to seek your presence, your glory. And Lord God, with your hand with us, we're going. Our trust is in you. 
not in us. Amen? Lord, with your hand, it'll all be blessed. Without you, I'm not going to stand up here Sunday. I'm totally dependent on you. Lord, if you don't speak to the people, nothing happens here today. But man, I trust and know by reason of use, by practice in his glory, by walking in his presence, I'm confident that he is with me. I'm confident that he is speaking through me. I'm confident that the Holy Ghost is touching your mind, body, heart, and business right now. Hallelujah. My faith is in him. Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. And oh, that your hand would be with me. Hallelujah. Jesus promised us that power. In the Old Testament, they'd cry out, Lord, I need you. God would come upon them like Samson and he'd win the battles or David. God would come upon them. But we got a better way now. You see, we're not in less supernatural days. Oh, if we were in the days of the Bible, Pastor Dave, this can happen. Buddy, we're in the days of the Bible. We're in the days that's far more glorious than then. They had the Holy Ghost now and then when it came upon them. Jesus died, cleansed us from all the sin of Adam, made you a new creation, opened your spirit, and then sent the Holy Ghost that was on them to give them power to live in you. You're closer than any of them. You have God and his power in you. If you're a believer, if you're not a believer, then praise God, you can repent right now and ask God to be with you. Say, Lord God, I recognize, hey, I've always heard about Jesus and I, you know, I, I know about him, but I don't really know him. Lord God, I need you to save me. I've been evil. I've done sin. I've been wrong. Lord God, forgive me. Cleanse me. Jesus, save me from myself. Save me from my sin. And he will. Maybe you've been away from him. You want this power and glory, but you're still struggling with all kinds of things. And you say, hey, right now, Lord God, cleanse me of this sin. Lord, I'm too weak to handle it myself. Father, right now, I'm crying out like Jabez. I've got sorrow and problems right now. Lord, I give you. Lord Jesus, save me. Cleanse me. I rededicate myself to you right now in Jesus' name. If that's you, just say it from your heart right now. Give your life to Christ right now. Doesn't matter. It's not about what happens up here. It's about what happens right here. Give your life to Christ right now. Rededicate yourself right now. You want to be able to ask him to expand your territory? We'll get the first thing right now. Lord, change me. Take this sin away from me. I can't battle it anymore. I'm weak in my flesh, and you're the only strong one. Lord God, I bow my heart and my knee to you. Lord, you be my Lord over this. I give it to you. And right away, he forgives you, he cleanses you, and he's willing to fill you with his power so that you can walk out what you have received. See, he wants you to be fruitful. He wants you to multiply. He doesn't want you to stay struggling in that sin over and over. He wants to free you. So that he could expand your territory and bless you. So we need his hand. How does it look today? It looks like this. Now that you're saved, Lord, fill me with your power. Lord Jesus, I can't do this expanding the territory. I can't do this advanced ministry. I can't do speak to people and see you. Lord, I need you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and lives in you and you shall be an effective witness. So we need to ask Lord Jesus to expand our territory. Fill me afresh. I need your hand of your power with me. Fill me afresh with your spirit. And the supernatural is available to you to walk in it today. Bigger, brighter, better than ever before of what you're reading in the Old Testament. Far greater. Hallelujah. And the last part of his prayer is very important. Let your hand be with me, that power. And then he says, and keep me from evil. This one says, keep me from this pain. Lord, you're removing the sorrow of my past. You're filling me with your power. You're with me and expanding the territory. Now, Lord, I want what I'm doing for you 
to be a blessing to others. I want it to last. I don't want to fall away and bring a disgrace to your name. So Lord, I need you to keep me from evil. I'm not smart enough, wise enough, strong enough, or have enough willpower or enough chips to keep myself from evil. I need you to keep me from evil. If you don't pray that prayer, he won't keep you from evil. Because you're just taking it for granted that you don't need him. That you rose enough, strong enough, that you don't need him anymore. Lord, I pray as your pastor, what Jesus taught, Lord, deliver me from evil today. Lead me not into temptation. What was his prayer? His prayer wasn't, let me see how close I can get to the evil of the world. Walk in it and demonstrate your power by overcoming all the evil that I'm around. No, I'm going to pray, Lord, keep me from the temptation. Don't even let me go close to it. Lord, I know I'm weak. I know I could struggle. So, Lord, I'm asking you in my weakness, I'm saying, lead me not into temptation. Don't let it cross my path. Don't let it cross my phone. Don't let it cross the movie. Don't let it cross my, don't let me flirt with disaster. Don't let me go there. Lord, deliver me. Keep me from evil so that I won't cause pain to others. A recent pastor just fell hard. Delivering many people, seeing them, and then falling hard to evil and all people around him hurt as well. My God! Want God to bless you? He wants to bless you. Want God to expand your business and territory? He wants to do it. Want God, to have his power to be with you? He wants to do that. But don't forget the last part of the prayer. Now that you're blessed and your business is expanding and you're expanding your territory and his power is with you. Lord, you better keep me from evil because I can't do it myself. Lead me not into temptation, Lord, because if I get led, led there, I know I will fall. So, Lord, lead me not into temptation. I'm not going to hang out at the bars. I'm not going around it. Lord, when I start to want to go there or talk there or look there, Lord, stop me in my tracks because I know I'll fall. So now what you're doing, you want to walk in his power and his glory? You have to be not dependent on your will and your power and your education and all, you know, we have to recognize our weakness and be dependent on Him. When you're dependent on Him for everything, you can go far. When you become independent of Him, I've got this now, look how blessed I am, disaster's waiting. It's real quiet in here. You think they got that, Caleb? I think they did. Why? Because the Holy Ghost is speaking. Because I believe the word. That he that believes in me, me, out of his belly, my innermost being and studying his word, will flow rivers of living water. The, the word I speak to you is spirit and life. You have to believe the word and know who you are and know the authority we sing about to go and do. But see, all of my trust is dependent on him, not me. So we'll close like this. How many of you want God to bless you? How many of you want Him to bless you indeed with a greater blessing than you've ever had because you want to bless others? How many of you want Him to enlarge your territory, your business, your influence, your finances, everything? He wants to. How many of you want his hand or his power to be with you in everything you do? How many of you would also be willing to not stop there but say, Lord, I need you to keep me from evil? Come forward quick. I'm going to pray. We're going to close. Come to the altar, everyone. God's going to answer the prayer of Jabez for every individual in this church and for the church as a whole. Hey, make room. We're going to be down the aisles all around. Come on. Come on. If somebody wants to jump on the keyboard, go ahead. Play something soft. Hallelujah. Come on, we're going to pray all together. And then we're going to close. Hallelujah. Keep on coming. Let's fill the altars first, and we'll fill the aisles as well.
Let's pray. We're going to pray the prayer of Jabez. And then after we pray that individually for each of you, your home, your family, your business, your ministry, everything, we're going to pray it together for the church. Because I believe God's not finished expanding our territory. I'm believing, Robert, that God's going to add other churches to the vision of this church with Go Deep Grace and help us to multiply it more rapidly. I'm going to believe it so much that I'm speaking it to you and to him and I'm going to pray it out loud. Hallelujah. So pray this with me. Hallelujah. Say this out loud. Bless me, O Lord. Now I'm just going to follow up that in the name of Jesus, I believe, Lord, that it's your will to bless every one of them right now. Lord, whatever blessing they're asking for, business, home, family, freedom, bless them now. Now pray this with me. Lord, expand or enlarge my territory. Father, I agree with them. Enlarge their businesses. Father, I pray for some businesses in here to double in this next year in the name of Jesus. For your glory, Lord. Father, I pray for health right now to strengthen each person right now. Lord, I pray, pray for marriages. I pray for families. I pray to enlarge families. Lord, bless those who are crying out for a baby right now in the name of Jesus. Enlarge their territory, Lord. Grant it, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Pray this with me. Lord, let your hand be with me. New Testament speaks, say it like this. Fill me with your Holy Ghost and power. I know your spirit is in me. I'm asking for another blessing. I'm asking to fill me again. Fill me with your power. Fill me with your glory. That out of me will flow the river. In the last part of the prayer, Lord, lead me not into temptation. Deliver me from evil. In the name of Jesus, I agree with them, Lord. We can't keep ourselves from evil. We live in a fallen world. It's all around us. Lord, we have this treasure of the Holy Ghost in a body that mind is not completely renewed and our body is not also. So, Lord, we need your help. We ask you, Father, I'm praying for this whole church, Lord, that you deliver them from evil. There will be no more adultery. There'll be no more fornication. There'll be no more addiction. There'll be no more evil. Lord, wipe out the evil. Deliver us. We're counting on you. We can't keep ourselves. Lord, help every home, every heart. Lord, we ask you to lead us not into temptation. We ask you to deliver us from evil. Now, if there's anybody participating in that evil, you're asking me for him to keep you from. Just stop right now. In Jesus' name, he's given you the authority. Repent, turn from it. The blood of Jesus cleanses you right now and washes you. And the Holy Ghost take over that spot that was a stronghold in your life. And I decree and declare by the authority of God, that stronghold is broken and the power of God is in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you would, just pray softly in tongues or pray out loud. I'm going to pray this prayer of Jabez for the entire church together corporately. Do you believe he'll do that too? Father God, in the name of Jesus, first of all, we recognize your blessing. Your power has been with us for 24 years. But Lord, we're not stopping now. Father, we cry out like Jabez. Oh, that you would bless us again, indeed, even more. Lord, that you would enlarge our territory even more than it is now, that you would continue to increase it here locally, Lord, around the community, around Franklin Parish, for, for fresh start, around more states, and Lord, for Go Deep Grace, around more nations. Lord, enlarge our territory. We want it for your glory, not for ours. And Lord God, we pray that your hand would be with us. Lord, I pray your hand be with this church. Lord, with the children's ministry, from the nursery all the way up through the youth to the adults. Lord, that your hand of power, by the power of the Holy Ghost, be with everyone here and be with the church as a whole. Now, Lord God, we pray that you keep us from evil. 
Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from the evil of the world. Lord God, we present our body to you, our whole self as a living sacrifice. Lord, you are worthy. Lord, we surrender all to you. Bless this church, Lord, as you bless Jabez. Bless all the members here and bless this church. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody shout glory. glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, we love you. We pray, pray. God bless you. Have a great day. We'll see you again soon.